Yeah. You want to um, look at, I saw you sent me emails. Do you want to look at those? Just, yeah, let's look at those and okay. uh, go from there. Uh, so I, you know, I've watched some of the painting with fire. I haven't really watched the latest one, which looks beautiful though. I want to talk to you about that. But um, is it the, the one that was released, uh, the background one? No, that, that one, I've actually been playing with that. I was kind uh -huh. of surprised, but uh, I think um, uh, I've been working on these really, like you said, dark and highly colored pieces and I yeah. think it's more subdued. So I've been working on the backgrounds, but yeah, there are things to talk about, but also the one that was just posted that has, uh, it's a photo transfer thing. I wanted to ask you, do you do, you know, when you're printing, do you ever send um, that film through the printer? Um, I've never done it, no. Okay. Yeah, it's the right. it's the transfer onto the surface of the wax? No, it, um, actually the transfer is to uh, rice paper. Oh, and then they embed, and then they embed the rice paper into yeah, the right, and then that is, you know, that's what's waxed and everything's done to that. That sounds so too complicated. <laughs> well, if you see the first picture, I saw the first picture, and I thought, oh my gosh, oh. Anyway, so if you haven't, I think there's a woman here who's. Is it Patty Rosati? Do you remember her name? Is it the I don't the name? But there's a woman here who has done that um, film, uh, you know, you know, it's a plastic film to go through a printer. So I'll, I'll ask her if she can do that because I don't want you to mess up your printer. Um, I've never done it. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I feel too like my printer, not that my printer's on its last legs, but that my computer, I, just like, you know, when yeah. you have something that works and you're like, right. That's why I don't want to introduce any. I, so I was just asking if you did it, fine. No, I, no, I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'll do someone here. Okay, so this is the this is the first one. Look, look how you fixed her back. It's beautiful. Oh well, that was underneath. That was the encaustic that was underneath this green part. Yeah, this little like that right and. Yeah, I just I'll leave it and see what you think. If you if you think it's okay, I'll just leave it. Um, I, I love it. I mean, the okay. only thing I might say is that the the only comment I might have is that the yeah, I feel like that yellow, like this yellow over here works really well. This yellow on her hair, I think, is too strong. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I was but um, I wouldn't take it off because I think taking it off would just cause more problems. I would actually just put like a light green or a very pale light white oh, over yeah. top of it. Yeah, because remember you always always ask yourself, mm -hmm. just go through your little list that you're now really incorporating into your memory and be like off, like blend by taking it away or blend by adding something else on top. Okay, so, so a lot of the times it's easier when you have something like constructed pretty much mm -hmm. if you don't want to destroy what you have mm -hmm. just add something on it that'll just subdue it or calm it down just a like um a lot of medium a little bit of uh green you know, so i don't even think you have to add any wax in this situation i think you could just add a little bit of pigment stick uh oh. in a lighter color right on top okay I wouldn't even add any wax because then if you add the wax, then you're gonna be like, well, what shape is it? And blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Okay. You know, all, all the stuff that goes along with adding the wax. And then you're like, oh, do I feel, you know, like, what do I do? Right. Okay, so pig, pigment stick with the, that green, but very, very light. Okay. Yeah, and that'll just soften the yellow, right? And it will just take down, um, it'll just take down the sharpness of that line that you put in there. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't like the way I etched those lines, up, but yeah, so that'll help. Good. Right, but, but a lot, but again, like you do, it's sort of like action reaction, right? So you, you should feel confident in doing whatever you do, but mm -hmm. then when you process and edit, then you can sort of make decisions about, you know, how much, sort of like how much of it do you want to keep? Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. And how could it like benefit you? 
more mm -hmm. if it was a little bit some like something something right yeah. yeah yeah i wasn't crazy about the those um and with the dress oh my goodness i i looked up all kinds of dresses done and the folds so i, I think you did a great job with the dress i really i think just great i scraped back all that texture uh -huh. <laughs> so I, have lot, I have a lot of wax and then I just painted it and I No, I think you did a great job. I, oh, I, I really do. I think you did a great job. I mean, if anything, another suggestion is this area underneath her arm. Yeah. It's oh, just right. so it's it's just so sharp. Oh, soften it. Okay. So so just like just it's almost like you took it and you just like went like like a per per yeah, like, yeah. like okay. kind of you know like maybe just rough it like the one two one two and you could almost even do it you know by adding um the green over top of it just to break up the red line as if mm -hmm. or the red going over the green whichever is easier okay. whichever one you have more at hand of like if you have that magenta red pigment stick just take a little brush mm -hmm. and just like under her breath, like just go out, yeah. just brush it out a little Ball. bit. Okay. Just so okay. it doesn't look like she's just so, you know, like she doesn't even look human because she's just so completely. Well, the other thing is perfected because it, it, the wax is different. You can't see it here, but the wax is different thicknesses. So that'll help soften that part too. Right. Um, well, and then so I paint. I, I painted, you know, the way, you know, I looked at the different folds and blah, blah, blah. And then I wanted to put a little bit of texture back in. So I. Yeah, I, you added the stencil. Yeah, just a little bit of, it's a little bit of lace. So yeah. is that okay, you think? Yeah, I like it. I mean, I almost feel like you could add a little bit more. Okay. You know, just like free form, even like over here. Because again, like this line. Okay. Gets like so perfect. But what if like right. Here, let me. Okay. I think it's easier if I do this in Photoshop because then we at least we have a record of what we talked about. Yeah. That's okay. So cool. okay. So here, mm -hmm. here. This is what I was talking about. So. I'm gonna paint with the red. Oh wait, hang on. That's not a good color, huh? I like the shape a lot better than the other shape too. I didn't like that shape. Right, like you got our boot. Right, but what if there's just like, I don't know, I mean, just just something here as if it could even be like, it's like, you know, like another, just something. A little lace coat, yeah, okay. Right, I mean, okay. I don't know, just like a little. Okay. And then here, I feel like you could maybe even take like some of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know, oh, it's not gonna let me do that, hold on. You know, like if there were like something coming off of here. Oh. Like just a little, a little bit of, I don't know, like a, yeah. And just sitting on top of the green, you know, like not. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I looked at it, it feels to me that this it needs something that kind of pulls it all together. Like there's a block of something, a block, you know, and that I think some of these softening things will help. Yeah, I mean, just just like, and you could even do it with like, see how these are dots. Yeah, you could even just make like tiny little like encaustic waxy dots, or like with a little paintbrush, just to suggest because like it's these nice little bits of texture here. I mean, just to suggest something here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to be specific in any way. And you know, the mm -hmm. same with this. It's like. Mm -hmm. You know, just see how I'm just like kind of, and look, I can yeah, turn down the right. opacity on this. Bring it, bring it down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it don't take it away. Like it's fine, but look how nice it looks like underneath. Oh yeah. 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 You yeah, know, right. so it's like, it's not like you did anything wrong. It's just like, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just kind of like breaking it up. So it makes it look more like there's movement. You know, and less yeah, like a, have movement. Yeah, okay. Right, less is such a freeze frame. I mean, I think that's you know, that's one of two of the things that I really liked about you know my photography specifically. It was like, you know, suggestion of blur, nothing was super crispy sharp, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the things that are out of focus, I feel like are purposely that way to evoke the imagination and sort of allow storytelling. 
because you're not like ending everything with a hard line, you know? Right, right. I'm going back to, with this, I was going back to the literal photograph, you know, like that, <laughs> in that sense, instead of well, Right, but that's where your, but that's your instinct. And you, you know, you, you're sort of trying to teach yourself a new language. So your instinctual language is to say it this way. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you can do that, but then when you look at it again, or you get a little critique on it, then you could be like, oh yeah, yeah that's right, fine. Right. But something needs to give, like there needs to be yeah. like um, a rhythm, you know, like a bouncy back and forth between yeah. the literal and the um, uh, uh, looser, imaginary, yeah. ephemeral. Yeah, I really like that. And um, I've been doing, you know, cause I'm a little restricted in shooting right now. I've been doing more flower, but with it with camera movement so there's uh -huh. more, so just oh that's nice learning yeah just kind of learning that and getting a feeling for it because i i love blur of dancers dancing you know so yeah so bring bring those in that feeling into the picture okay so Great. look so here's like the before you know here's and i like the you know this is the two yeah 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 yeah, I like it a lot better. Right. And I mean, I just, and too, like if you use a semi translucent pigment stick and just kind of like put some mm. brushy stuff around over this hard line, you're not getting rid of it. You can leave it there. Don't mm -hmm. change it. Just kind of like almost like right. you're rubbing it out a little. You're just blurring the eye from looking straight at this, like this, and mm -hmm. looking more at like this. You Great. know? Great. Yeah. yeah. All right, two little touches on that. I'll send you this picture. It's like before. I, oh, have I, I can take a screen grab. Wait, oh, here, I'll, I'll open that one back up then. Hold on one second. Because then I, I have it right away. Hang on. Uh, yeah, and where did the first? Got it. Okay, I got it. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. You got that one? All right. Okay. Um, okay, so the next one, it's has different issues. <laughs> oh, wait, here, here has a, a different <laughs> issue. Right? Hold on. Different, but it's wait, this is one of the of the late this is the ladies in the tree, right? Right. So um oh um, yeah okay wait this is the one you had before. Right. And we, oh and we had talked about adding a little bit of texture on the left hand side. Well okay well the thing is there is texture in the wax and I love it. I mean I purposely used a brush and I was just kind of doing a wave like motion. Uh -huh. I couldn't pick up on the ridges with the pigment stick. So then I thought well, I took a, a brush that I have that has little things coming out like the brush is here. Can you see, see it? Yeah 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 okay. yeah. And then there's a little thing. So I had to actually manually put the pigment on the brush and then I do a couple of strokes. I had to put more pigment on. Right. I'm not crazy about it. To me, it looks a little too, it's too busy. But what I really what? wanted was that, what's the texture that was the original brush stroke? But I don't know how to get that. You didn't scrape that off, did you? The original brush stroke no, was there. No, I didn't scrape it off. This okay, is all, okay. yeah. So, and then this is done with encaustic wax, the light colored. No, that's pigment. All the light colors I, I put. This is pigment. That's pigment. And, and it's dry now. Yeah. Okay. So if you, I just think it's too, and if I remember correctly, not in this picture, but the original is really like a pretty blue. It's like a real dark bluey green, right? Like a blue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It so it looks like more gold in this picture. So again, what I would do, and I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this and not not to make it like, not to cause more sort of yourself sort of more problems, right? But sort of to remedy where, from where you are now, right? Move mm -hmm. forward. You could just take this color, you know. The blue. Oh. Right, this right. blue with like an extender stick, right? And make it fairly translucent and just kind of like, soften the oh of course right and again it's it's just like so it's like now you can kind of control where this is going to be light and dark you know and really you, you want to emphasize i think these rate these because these are like right the remember when we were talking about hierarchy of imagery right mm -hmm. so if you want something to be more important than something else it you know you either make it bigger or brighter right those are your two sort of adjectives bigger or brighter or descript descriptions, right? So then everything else has to go 
below, beneath, right? Below, behind. So, right? So you can kind of go over and you can, can control now what's the most important thing, mm -hmm. you know, by how much, how the translucency of your pigment stick, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And if the pigment stick is opaque, you know, then you're going to go get totally, you know, get rid of it. Now, it might be almost impossible to totally get rid of it, but are you liking that better? I like it. I do like it better. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. and then the other thing I was thinking of, I love it now. And I don't mind these oh, under, okay. I don't mind these, these textures underneath. I, I really actually kind of like them. Okay. Good. So, you know, and the nice thing about RNF paints, and this is not true for Encausticos paints made by Foreign Art Store, mm -hmm. but RNF pretty much consistently, if they make it in encaustic, they make it in the pigment stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's actually kind of a really, really nice thing is because it's like using the mm -hmm. same color, you know, kind of hard and soft, right? You have the same yeah. pigment in two very different mediums that work really well together, but have totally sort of different jobs. Yeah. You know, like the pigment stick for me really is about like uh, toning the wax, getting cut, you know, bright, showing off texture, hand painting, you know, like those types of things. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, the wax's job is to create those textures, be more sort of bold and heavy mm -hmm. and give the weight, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a bird and a butterfly, like the wax is the bird and, you know, and the pigment stick is the butterfly. Cool. Yeah, I do. I have that. How do you call it? The flat out, flat, flat, flat low blue. Fal fallow. Fal you don't say fallow. the, I think it's fallow. Yeah. Okay. Fallow blue. So you don't say the fallow blue and, and caustic and pigment stick because I love the color and I love that fallow green too. It's yeah. Just, whoa yeah so i know and that and that magenta like those are really bold and gold i mean technically cyan magenta and yellow right are the founders of color imagery right so using those strong colors in single paintings is really interesting so here's a question i i, I really like what you've done here but just as a question yeah. um the the pigment is dry on this one Mm -hmm. but what I've been doing is like I'll take um, just vegetable oil and I'll rub it on because there were a couple of places I wanted to do some corrections in, in other parts of the picture mm -hmm. and it, it came up, the, the pigment stick came up. So if I got it off and I have the original texture, is there any way, it, it's very subtle texture, but is there any way I could pick up those ridges with you that. just have to go you have to put the pigment stick or a pan pastel right on you could probably even use like a makeup pad i mean i might just use my finger but you have to touch it you have to touch it so gently like as if you were like um cgi or like i'm sorry like csi like investigative oh, right. <laughs> picking up a uh fingerprint right Oh, so it's not trying to rub it in to get. No, you're just trying to rub like you're literally oh. you know, trying to detect like a fingerprint on a flat surface. Like you're just just wanting, you want the the pigment stick just to sit on like the very very surf surface. Uh huh. Oh. Oh. Okay. Of the wax. Okay, so I'm not trying to catch it, you know, and have it in a. Okay. Yeah. So I was doing the wrong technique on that. So I don't know. I mean, I like what you've done. You know, maybe yeah, I'll goes, try one, one little is, area and see if I can do it the other way. You know, yeah, I mean, it. this is a thing for you too, because we've talked about this with your work before. Is like how much pressure to apply and when, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, if you're rubbing hard uh, with the pigment stick on the wax. Yeah, you're gonna push it into Mm -hmm. crevices and stuff but if you go very very lightly gently across the top you can put it just like resting on top yeah because the on the right hand side everything is you know it's really pushed in in right behind, the little holes I, I want to i really want to play with the texture here so so wait you now you're talking about removing these white whitish yellow lines and then trying to put just the blue just white on the wax texture with no lines on the left hand side yeah i mean okay so, I, i'm just afraid that you're gonna hurt it 
Yeah. And you try to get that other paint off, but you could try an area. I could try one little area and. Yeah, area. try a corner. Try yeah. like a corner. Right. Okay. Because that, worst stuck. case scenario, listen, and worst case scenario is you reapply another layer of that wax and that fallow color, which is an option too. It's always an option to wax again. Yeah. Okay. I, I just got really fascinated by the texture, using the texture of the wax, you know, and, you know, I had all kinds of ideas of stars and all that. And I thought, no, 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 I just want to work with the wax, what the wax is doing. So, right. Um, okay. Well, I like it a lot like this. I'm going to send you this. You can contemplate, uh, contemplate this. I mean, I, I like it. No, I, 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 like, really, I, I really like how you fixed it. I'm well, I like the repetition that you have this line, you know, you have this sweeping line large yeah. over here on the right, but then on the left, you have this sweeping, you know, it's the mirror oh, image yeah. of the shape. Yeah. But it's repeated and small. On the I don't know. I, I like that juxtaposition. Well, and then also the flag, it was yeah. very stencily. And so what I did is I just started pulling back on it, pulling and make it more ragged. Yeah. Know? So I like that modification. So, okay, these next ones, let me see. If you look, there's an order to these. So why don't you go to the okay. third picture first? This one? The, yeah, that one, right. Okay, so what she was showing us is, um, yeah, this is just a test strip. I just want mm -hmm. to see. Okay, so this woman was doing um, the yes adhesive. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, I don't, I used to use the S page for everything. I don't use it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, and she had it very wet. So I started doing that. And with the yes paste? Yes paste. So right. the problem with the yes paste is that um, it's very humidity sensitive. So it dissolves over year, over years. Like five years later, the yes uh, paste uh, gets wet again. If it's in a humid location, it gets wet again because okay. it's very wettable. Uh, okay. Well, I was, I wanted to ask you what, about the archival stuff. Although I, I mean, won't use yet yes space for anything because of that reason. However, it's not the only medium that can do this. I mean, you could do the same thing with PVA glue or with, uh, with gel medium. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the other thing I'm, I'm in Arizona, so it's, it's always dry. Um, yeah, but, so you might not have a problem. I have a problem because yeah. I it is it now Pennsylvania too more and more it rains more and more here like you wouldn't even believe it. Wow, like it's more humid. Wow. I mean, this wow. year has been the most rainy year I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I wish we had that. I know it's bizarre. Yeah. It's, it's not it's for me. Not I, for this stuff, I just thought, well, I'll just play with it because I've been thinking I wanted to do more subtle things, you know, and have a little more complexity. So yeah. I, yeah, anyway, so oh, I love it. If you look at the next one. Okay, so this was the collage. That, so she basically had you make it like all the papers wet. So they blended together right. with the gel and then you let it dry and then you wax over it. Well, yeah, but I'm not even at that. So she would okay. have like, you know, the hardy. Oh, no, no, not that one yet. Go to the end. That's something else. Because I wanted to show the process. So this one was when it was all. Um, then she had us put chalk paint on. Uh huh. So because it's it's acrylic chalk paint, so I'm I'm not I was I'm, I'm testing it to see if it works. Wait, but it's, I think the chalk paint works is going to work with the encaustic because there's chalk in it. I, don't, yeah. I think you're fine. I think the chalk is has like a uh something something that works with wax. So yeah. So this, I, I've I got chalk. this like a cheap little set of, just to try it out. So I wanted to see if it'll hold up. So anyway. So, so this is after I put <clears throat> the chalk paint on. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is all new for me. I love okay. it, yeah. No, it's and great. The third, and then the third one, I put the encaustic on. Oh, it's I beautiful. I love this. I know, I just love it. It's beautiful. Well, so, so those were my test pieces. Okay, so wait, so now, you know, like Lorraine, you're, she probably has, a, I don't know what she's teaching on here, but you know, she uses this layer of wax and then cuts out flowers and uses it and embeds them in this layer. Real flowers? No, oh, no. Oh, pictures okay. of May, oh. Actually, she doesn't do, she does photography, but she primarily uses like um, magazine pictures. Uh-huh, okay. Well, so with 
this one, what she was saying is you, you do, you know, like transparent, uh, no, I mean, regular with the yes. And then uh -huh. you put in things like the back of, of a napkin. That could be a flower, the back of a napkin, just right. really subtle. Um, so I didn't get the, into that with flowers. But, and then, then you put the chalk paint on and then the encaustic. Okay. So you're saying that with what Lorraine does, I could, if I'm putting the encaustic on, I could put pictures of flowers on this that at that yeah point. so what so yeah so i mean and i can give you a demo in the studio on this the next time we meet if you want but basically once you have a layer of wax medium you can take a cut a, a, a cut out put it on there use attacking iron you can even brush oh, a little bit okay. of medium over the photo and then fuse it in there and let it cool and then basically it's attached Oh, okay, I get the that. image. So it doesn't have to be. A, this is the thing too. It's like it's very exciting, even for me, because I used to always put my photos at the back of the at the back of the right. pile, right. so that my photos were in the on the base right. camp next to the panel, and then the layers of wax would go on top. But right. with all these other new, you know, techniques that people are coming up with and sharing. It's like uh -huh. you could have a photo, then you could have three layers of wax, and then you can embed a flower. Mm -hmm. in the layers of wax closer to the surface mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and further away from the original subject photo or whatever or content yeah. yeah yeah so that's good that's good yeah so the next so the next one then i tried um we now have to go back hold on then you put the okay. figure in it then you okay. put the not that one the, the okay. other one before that this one before that okay these i haven't put any encaustic on it's just the background and these i just put there just to kind of i tried yeah. different conditions so but it's so, interesting, yeah. but let's talk about this for one second. I don't like the gray one as much as I like the brown one. Right, that's interesting, okay. Because I don't well, like I that. Do, I, I can do things, I haven't I haven't put them on yet. I could do things to the gray one, I can. I think you should hand it. color it. I don't think it should be so cold tone. I think that the yeah. background is so warm tone. Yeah. I think that it's just too shocking. Um, yeah. Gray well, I was tone. thinking, first I thought, well, maybe I could do, um, like a light encaustic wash. I haven't put any encaustic on yet. Well, don't forget you can paint any of those papers that I gave you with uh -huh. watercolor. With watercolor? Yeah, Maybe. watercolor. Oh, cool. So you can actually- yeah, or paint, hand color, okay. Yeah, you can hand paint any of the rice papers or the Hanamil papers or any of those. You can use color. Do you know those colored pencils? Colored, yeah, washable them. colored pencils. You okay. can use liquid watercolor or um, hard, you know, hard, and, and you could just slightly put it, you can even paint your papers with um, tea, like an orange pico tea. I did, I did that. I, I have um, a toning tea in the garage. Yeah, yeah and just tone that. The, to yeah, just t paint a little bit of the tea on this picture. Even, and if you wanted to leave the figures black and white, like maybe just the tree gets toned, you know, yeah, which- Actually, I could just soak it in the tea for a while. Make sure. Have it's you ready. ever wait? Have you ever heard of a photographer named Phil Phil Borges? He no. he. Oh wait, wait, we just I just have to show him to you real quick. So he split tones everything. Um, my one of my really good friends worked for him for years. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. He travels the world, but all of these photos are made. Oh wow! Look at these. Yeah, you would love these. So they're oh, all yeah. analog. They're all dark room, and they're all split toned. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. So the brown, the brown people, their skin is colored, mm -hmm. and the background is silver. Oh my god! I have to call I'm my stupid. Aren't they beautiful? They are beautiful. They're oh, so beautiful. Yes. And this speaks exactly to sort of your color i mean you when you're working in neutrals you the color palette yeah yeah oh i love this I so know, he was toning them digitally or no and no in the dark room he used to mask paint them with mask um he would paint them with uh this red mask medium and then tone them and then remove it was kind of like a jello it stuck to the paper but then you could take it off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the it, like there's like a lithic uh, not lithograph Ruby. it was the weirdest stuff it was like this red jelly wow. wow and he would paint uh he would print them in black and white and then he would paint the backgrounds and then he would tone the people okay. i know they're so aren't they beautiful yeah oh thank you for showing that to me wow. yeah 
see that. Oh, look at it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's an, and this is a really good example too, because I'm thinking a lot about this for my new work is mm -hmm. I really want my background and foreground. I really want my backgrounds to go way back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want my people and the things to be, I want that them to be coming out like the kind of site like really like this, look how three dimensional this is yeah it's yeah it's really beautiful and even with this second out of focus figure makes it even more right like look at the this one with the animals too all right um anyway uh phil borges he, yeah he, I'll, oh I'll he's gonna, gonna be in your video he's gonna be in the video hold on i know i love him yeah so my one of my great one of my roommates and friends from college um was his assistant for years in Seattle. So okay. I got to go to his studio and it was pretty cool. Very cool, okay. I'll look him up. Mm -hmm. I love that. So yeah, I was thinking also that I wanted to do something with that black and white. I love the back one, but I the black and white one. Yeah, so that, let me see what I can do to- Yeah, maybe the rock, maybe the rock goes like, you know, maybe the tree goes brown, and the rock could go like a bluish, you know, green or like a, mm -hmm. a blue brown, like some, I don't know. I mean, or brown, mm -hmm. whatever. Right, right. Okay, okay, great. Color, you can always do stuff with dry colored pencils too. Okay. Because colored pencils are very light. Like you, you're hard, you know, it's very hard to get a dark, to get an opaque color out of a colored pencil. Yeah, yeah. You have to okay. really put some muscle into that. <laughs> so. So what I did is I, yeah. I made this background I, and I knew I wanted it neutral and, and kind of brown, although I see a lot of green there. It looks like a map. It's so beautiful. It looks like a map. It, it really looks like a, a map. Huh. So I feel like if you made any type of dark, if you followed any of the ridges and made them like veiny, it would really look like a map. Oh, cool. If you wanted to put any lines in it or like you've been working on the constellations. I love your inclusion of like the world, the atmosphere, you know, nature, the, the uh, geography, land, sky, like maps of things. Oh, I love maps. I'd love to do more with that. Okay. This looks so cool. much like a map to me. Huh. Like this is a, this is a landline right here. This is water. Right. This is like a mountainous area over oh, here. I see it now. Oh, that's so mountains cool. over here. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing she was saying about doing the backgrounds is you're not painting. You just you you're just doing you know like a background. <laughs> right. You're not thinking compositionally, and you're not thinking foreground. Back. You're not thinking content. Yeah. You're, just, yeah. you're just covering like space with color. But I like the idea of the of the map showing the map. Well, also, just. So this was just a test thing, you know, I want to, and I, like I said, I haven't, I haven't even tried to glue the, um, the photographs down yet, but I'll, can I use PVC over once this is totally dry? So I'm you... going to try this layer on top of the wax, not with PVA glue. I'm going to try it with the gel medium myself, like this, this week, hopefully. I mean, I'm going to the encaustic conference on Thursday, so I'm going to be gone a couple of days, but I'm really going to, um, I might try, I'm going to try two pieces and I'm, they're just going to be old boards that I have. I'm going to glue, I'm going to just, I have a bunch of boards I want to recycle anyway. So rather than scrape them all the way back, I think I'm just going to scrape them flat right. and work from there because they'll end up looking a lot like this, mm -hmm. you know, like they'll just look like, like abstract. So I'm going to do one uh, rice. I'm going to try to use the rice paper. I'm not going to use the photo rag. I'm going to use the rice paper. I'm going to do one with gel medium and one with PVA glue. And then you'll know which and one. And then I'm going to just test them. I mean, they might they might act exactly the same. I mean, I, I, I have a feeling that I might not even be able to tell, but I think that I've mentioned, I usually mention in my workshops too, like my bad experience with Yes Paste. Like I really have had, I mean, I've had, Dan, really, really important pieces destroyed by yes paste because it comes unglued. So I switched to PVA glue and wood glue because the wood glue just does not, it's strong enough to, to stand up to the humidity. So I mix the PVA glue. If I'm working on something larger than 11 by 14, uh -huh. when I kind of get bigger than that, I use 50-50 PVA glue and wood glue. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only problem with the wood glue is that it can, um, 
even on the photo rag paper, it can yellow the paper. Oh. Because the wood glue actually has, is actually very yellow. Mm -hmm. So, that so then good. that's like, okay, then you're like, okay, well maybe a quarter wood glue, three quarters uh -huh. PVA glue. So it's then it's just about getting the formula. Uh -huh. Right, anyway. Well, I had no idea about different, he's, I mean, I've been using PVA because that's what you start. That's no, what that's what I love. That's my number one, yeah. number one. But I just thought, well, I'll test out this other thing. So, yeah, test can, it. Test yeah. the PVA glue because you have it. And then if you feel like buying a small, and again, like, you know, if you're gluing a small object, mm -hmm. you're more, you're going to get away with more because it's just not, okay. a big, and for me, I just don't, again, rule from past experience, I don't glue any large pieces of paper. Right. right. Even if I'm gluing mm -hmm. a 20 by 24, I cut it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. I strip it. I either, mm -hmm. and then I, or I square it and I put it back together. Wow. So that's just become like a preventative medicine for me, almost like taking my vitamins because I feel more confident that those individual pieces will not become undone. I won't have large air bubbles. Like I'll right. just be easier to handle it. I'll feel less stressed, like mm -hmm. a long list of overall reasons. And I, and it's become sort of part of my signature work now that there's a bit of like patchworky yeah. things put together underneath. Um, not that it's not all together. That's a really good analogy. It's not all together underneath. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Quote, says the artist, right? Like, okay, okay. not okay. perfect. Yeah. Anyway. I, I feel these are tests and with the yes, um, that just means I can't give it to anybody who's um out of arizona who's in a in a humid environment <laughs> no you can but the, but i mean i'm talking about work like 15 20 years i mean you can but i just feel like as a professor like I, you know yeah, I, yeah. so and again again like if someone is it in there if it's climate control storage 24 7 its whole life it will not have, probably have a problem yeah these are pieces that were in my studio but you know whatever i mean i still just felt uncomfortable yeah right with well, it. So let's go to the, the next one. Mm -hmm. So the next one was a little different. Um, I, I had the, you know, did the background thing. And then I, I, I didn't put any, there's wood, plain wood under the photograph itself. Okay. But I did use the yes glue with some Mod Podge mm -hmm. and the Mod Podge on the background and that. So I'm going to see once it's dry and I have a put encaustic on it. So I want to see if that's going to hold up. Okay. Uh, maybe it, it may not. Um, but uh, yeah. Wait, let's yeah. talk about this piece. I need to call you back because I have this stupid Zoom thing. I need to call you back with another call. So let's hang up on this one. I'll call you right back. Okay. All right. Bye.